why this happens because of the mechanism of course so amphetamine gives you which mechanisms first it releases dopamine norepinephrine serotonin from nerve endings the big release of all these three monomers also it inhibits reverse neuronal reuptake the neuronal reuptake will be inhibited the release will be increased and also it will inhibit mao so remember from the antidepressants we had one of these effects inhibiting the reuptake or inhibiting mao but the amphetamine gives all these effects in the sum yes so it gives a very strong effect which is um, really uh, dangerous okay about the peripheral action of course everybody understands that if it has the increase of that much monomides it will increase the uh, secretion of adrenaline from the adrenal glands. Uh, adrenalinetic direct effect, uh, well, it's not direct, okay, indirect effect, and it will have uh, all the effects of adrenalinetic drugs, like increased glycogenolysis, lipolysis due to beta receptor stimulating, increased uh, blood pressure due to alpha receptor stimulating, increased heart rate due to beta 1 receptor stimulating, and so on. So, uh, like, you have a lot of adrenaline secretion. What will be the effect? This is obvious. Uh, mesocarp or sidnocarp. This is also one drug from this group, but it is less active. It displaces norepinephrine and partial dopamine from nerve endings and has weaker peripheral effects. So, the effect will be uh, less pronounced than in amphetamine but it will be quite um, quite good stimulating drug it is not prescribed for normal people uh xanthin xanthin this is our favorite caffeine caffeine that's not efficient method this is not caffeine caffeine which we take from coffee caffeine uh but the most the most the more uh most amount of caffeine if i'm not mistaken it's not in the coffee beans but in co co cacao cocoa beans and of course in the coca no sorry uh coca leaves we have cocaine <laughs> uh anyway it has the same effect actually it's also a type of stimulant cocaine uh because if you remember when we studied cocaine uh it has also uh, the inhibition of MAO and the, the increased release of uh, monamines. So cocaine is from the same group. Okay, the caffeine, our favorite caffeine, is not that uh, dangerous. It is less dangerous and it has such uh, mechanisms. First, blockage of adenosine receptors and second, inhibition of phosphodiesterase. Um, Anyway, this leads to accumulation of CMB in the CNS and CMP, depending on different cells, plays a different role. For example, in the heart, in the myocyte, accumulation of CMP gives you the stimulating effect. So it will be increasing of the heart rate and heart power. In smooth muscles, the accumulation of CMP leads to reduce of calcium ions. Ah, this all is connected with calcium ions. So in heart, it will be more calcium ions, so more contraction. In smooth muscles, it will be less calcium ions, so it will be relaxation. Calcium everywhere. Sorry. For the platelet aggregation, it will be uh, accumulation of CMP will give, if I'm not mistaken, less calcium, less calcium, so less aggregation. Uh, for diuresis, what will be? It will have the effect of increased diuresis. Why? Because of dilation of kidney artery and in CNS and CNS it will be the stimulating effect stimulating effect 
because of this there will be one um how to say it like a um, conflict between the effects of uh caffeine on the blood pressure so how it can affect on the blood pressure it can affect on blood vessels by relaxing smooth muscles it will have a direct dilating effect on smooth muscles of the blood vessels vessels okay but through the cns in which we stimulate we have stimulation of vasomotor center vasomotor center vasomotor center gives you the contraction of blood vessels Inhibition of vasomotor a stimulation of vasomotor center gives you the contraction of blood vessels. So you see different uh, different effect. If here we have direct uh, dilation of blood vessels through the CNS, we give the contraction of blood vessels. The same problem we have with the heart directly directly. We have stimulated on the heart, but indirectly, again, through the CNS. In CNS, we will have the stimulation of uh, vagus nerve center, vagus. And you know that vagus will inhibit the work of heart. So again, you have stimulating effect and inhibiting effect. Finally, the final effect will be different. Final effect, effect differs in patients. So that means that you cannot be sure that caffeine will increase your blood pressure. Sometimes it has the decreasing effect on the blood pressure. And also, not for all the patients, it will have the psychostimulating effect in which uh, the CNS will be more active. No, some patients don't have such effect. Predominantly, predominantly, yes. The CNS will be stimulated, the blood pressure will be increased. But sometimes you can see that peripheral effects will be stronger in caffeine and those patients will have no such effect okay well this is about caffeine and also also i forgot in the cns what else it has also stimulation of um, breathing and uh, vasomotor center so it is an epileptic also action it is also an epileptic action Simulation of breathing centers and uh, the vasomotor center. Okay. So uh, here is again the revise of the effects of caffeine. So central it will be psychostimulating. Oh, analeptic action, by the way, which I said. Uh, centers of the medulla oblongated, the respiratory center will be stronger. But the vasomotor center will work better and center of nervous nervous vagus. Cardiotonic action, this is the direct action on the heart, which will conflict with the vagus nerve. Then spasmolytic action, this is the relaxation of blood vessels and also some other organs like uh, GIT, for example, yes. And antiplatelet, oh, I was right, antiplatelet effect, so it means that uh, platelet aggregation will be less. Uh, it's already about the end of this lecture, but, but I want to tell you something else about this. Um, also, we have some other groups. We have the group, once again, analeptics. Analeptics. Analeptics, which 
are classified into central and peripheral analeptics. So, central. Central and peripheral, so central, so peripheral, peripheral. So, central analeptics, what do they do? Uh, they no, in general, in general, we will say that analeptics, they are used to stimulate the centers of medulla oblongata. In which cases, for example, your patient doesn't breathe due to some reason. And in that case, you have to stimulate his breathing center, which can be uh, achieved with the help of analeptics. So central analeptics like uh, we just discussed caffeine, yes, uh, camphor, uh, Benegrade, mm, enough. What do they do? They directly go to CNS through the blood-brain barrier. They penetrate, yes, uh, in the medulla, and they stimulate vasomotor center and respiratory center. And respiratory center. By stimulation of them directly, they make patients, firstly, breathe, because respiratory center. Secondly, uh, stimulate the contraction of blood vessels if your patient has kind of shock. Okay? Then, peripheral, what do they do? They don't go directly to the brain. They don't penetrate blood-brain barrier. They work in the peripheral tissue and directly in the carotid artery in the carotid bulb the the place where there is a bifurcata, bifurcation in english i don't really know but here for the carotid, carotid artery we have a lot of receptors and especially for us interesting are n polino receptors n polino receptors so the drugs of peripheral action, they stimulate ancolina receptors and they, I mean receptors, will send the afferent impulse to the uh, medulla oblongata. Impulse, you see, this is not the drug, the drug is not going to the CNS, the impulse goes with the neurons, okay, these peripheral drugs are Lobelin, cytosine, like that. And also we have mixed action, nicotinamide. It is uh, the drug which has both uh, peripheral and central effects. So what is interesting of that? These drugs of central action, they are more effective. Uh, they can be used in case of poisoning by with poisoning with some narcotics narcotics uh, sleeping pills or know, anesthetics and so on because why because this drug they will directly go to uh, CNS to the uh, medulla oblongata and they will force the cells, the neurons, to excite. In case of peripheral drugs, they cannot force them to excite. It will be the natural impulse from the receptor, which your neurons will not feel if they are poisoned with narcotics. If they are poisoned, that means they are inhibited very much. They are inhibited so much that they don't feel the stimuli. So, Lobelin and cytosine, they are not useful in case of poisoning with narcotics, okay? Uh, and also about lobelin and cytosine, they are used in, uh, in case of, um, for example, some reflex, reflex inhibition of breathing, of breathing. for example, or, I don't know, water in the lungs. 
and also the the dose should be very accurate because in case of overdosing uh, will be stimulation of ankylosing receptors of skeletal muscle. We remember that we have ankylosing receptors in skeletal muscles also. And if you stimulate skeletal muscles, you will have seizures, which will make your patient suffer even more. So because of that, we use only IV injections, okay? Only IV. This is very, very important. Okay, it was about the analeptic. And uh, also we had the group of adaptogens. Adaptogens. Actually, they have many, many, many effects. Different metabolic actions, increasing the um, like uh, energetical potential of our body, of our brain, our um, increasing the uh, like normalizing the blood pressure, stimulating memory. I don't know all the physical activities and so on. But they are not uh, psychostimulants. They are not. Um, dangerous they don't have many side effects they don't increase blood pressure for example too much they only normalize it normalize that means if you have low it will bring it to the normal uh numbers but not higher than normal okay and there is a only a theory theory how do they work uh they can work in uh pituitary pituitary and hypothalamus hypothalamus by increasing the release of uh, tropic hormones tropic hormones by pituitary gland a concrete adrenocortical tropic hormone which stimulates the adrenal gland gland to secrete the uh, hormones of adrenal gland. Hormones. Which are these hormones? They are steroids, steroids, and also uh, noradrenaline. Ah, no, not noradrenaline, adrenaline. Okay, but this effect will not be that much. It will be just uh, normal, just normal, in normal amount, in normal concentration, in normal concentration. Yes, it will not be too much excited. So due to this, uh, the drugs are um, considered to be quite uh, more or less uh, safe but effective these hormones they already give you all these effects increased uh, tone of the body a lot of energy which is by the way the, the most the same with tone energy uh, like better memory better sleeping also stimulate the lipolysis, uh, glycogenolysis, glycogenolysis, and so on. So many, many, many different metabolic effects can happen, and also stimulating the CNS. So all this is about the adaptogens. We have different adaptogens. Uh, in Russia, in uh, Siberia, we have rhodiola, rhodiola drug. In, uh, for example, in China, we have the uh, ginseng. Uh, I don't really know it in uh, English. It, I'm giving you the late name. Also, from China, we have schizandra. 
for example, yes, Eleutherococ. So these are the plants which are mostly used, Luzea also, uh, in Russia, in Barno. Uh, but they are not the only one, and I'm sure that in your country you have much more adaptogen uh, than in Russia we do have. So these are only just some examples. Okay, it was about adaptogens. And uh, no tropic drugs, I think uh, you can read them in lecture. They are not that interesting. So also one more thing, antimania drugs. Antimaniac drugs. Uh, which are the lithium compounds? Lithium salt. So let's discuss what is it. Firstly, mania, mania. It is the mm, psychiatric condition like uh, kleptomania. Yes. Uh, when the, pa uh, when the patient cannot control themselves in their super powerful willing to steal something. A little like pencil, I don't know, pen, maybe something beautiful, uh, earring, I don't know. No, they have that powerful willing that they cannot control it, even, even if they don't need that thing. Absolutely. They just come home and find out that Oh, I have stolen something already. So this is a problem of uh, mania. This is only one type of mania. Also, people who are serial killers, serial killers, they are also maniacs. They uh, cannot control their willing to kill the patient, uh, I don't know, people, people. They don't actually care who are those people. They just want to kill. This is also a mania. So it is the condition in which we have some pathological, pathological uh, over excitation, excitation, pathological over excitation. This is 100% pathological. So we have the drugs which are lithium compounds, and now we will remember a little bit from normal physiology. Your favorite thing, the Action potential graph. Okay, let's try to remember what's happening. When we have the rest potential in the slow sodium channels, we have slow, slow, slow process of depolarization. This is connected with the sodium sodium ions which go inside the cell. Uh, we go inside the cell and increase the um, potential, okay? When we reach the critical level of depolarization, critical level of depolarization, we have the rapid increase of potential, which we call action potential, yes? It is connected with the influx of sodium, and uh, calcium sometimes uh, through the channels and again they go inside the cell yes can they go inside the cell okay what is the next step next step is repolarization you see that um, there is a downwards uh, trend in the graph so during that repolarization, the potassium channels go out from the cell. The potassium channels leave the cell. Okay. Uh, and then our membrane potential becomes a little bit lower than in normal condition. A little bit lower. And then it comes back to the rest potential. And then the second time everything can be yes 
Okay, what's happened on this stage? When we have hyperpolarization, when we have this lower part, in this time, the sodium potassium ATPase work. ATPase work. I hope that you remember what is it. This is the enzyme which throws out sodium from the cell and brings back the potassium to the cell. Because for our cell, this is normal to have potassium inside. And only in this condition, when potassium is inside and sodium is outside, our cell can excite again. Yes. Now, let's see. Uh, now, we understand what is happening in the uh, cells of uh, people with mania. mania. In mania, we have the cells which are overexcited. Why they are overexcited? Because they have too much, too much permeability. Uh, perm, I don't know. Perm, I don't know how to write that in English. Uh, so they can be excited too much. They have too much influx of sodium ions in the cell. So if there is a too high permeability of the cell, they are overexcited and they uh, have some effects. It can be mania or it can be epilepsy. It can be something connected with excitation of the cell. So what do we do in that situation? How does lithium help us? If you remember what is it, lithium. Lithium actually is the metal which is very, very close to the sodium because it is a metal with one plus charge, yes? So it makes what? As you remember, like bromides in previous class, it replaces the sodium here. So what will be? Instead of sodium here and here, we will have the lithium ions here and here also. Everywhere here we will have the lithium ions. Okay, so what will be what will change here? The same, the same picture will be lithium comes inside the cell, then it comes quicker inside the cell with calcium together, then potassium goes out from the cell, goes out, goes out, and now, now, sodium, potassium, ATPA, it is the enzyme which is very selective. It cannot, it has no uh, affinity, no affinity. Well, not not no, but low affinity. No affinity, low affinity, or to lithium. So what does it mean? That means that this process will not happen normally, and the cell will not become possible to excite again. So this process will be like that. It will be much, much, much longer much longer and our cell cannot excite for the long, long, long time. Only after some time it can excite again when everything comes back. But lithium stays in the cell for the long time. So this is the mechanism of action of the cell. Longer, uh, longer phase of uh, Oh, I don't remember how we call this phase. It's hyperpolarization, and this is uh, um, sorry, I don't remember how. No, well, let it be normalization, normalization uh, of uh, ion balance. So, because of that longer normal normalization of ion balance, we will have. Uh, less action action potentials in that cell. So this is how do antimaniac drugs work. And and one more thing, 
In this case, also the anti-epileptic drugs, which are sodium channel blockers, can be used. Why? Because it will have the same uh, effect, actually. Uh, so here you replace sodium, uh, sodium uh, ions, and with the channel blockers, you will just uh, block the channels, and sodium will not come inside. The result will be the same. There will be no action potential. So this is it. I hope that everything was clear. Thank you for your attention. See you next week.